Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at an example of applying George Polia's four-step problem-solving approach. So in this example, two opposite sides of a square are increased by 10 centimeters. The other two opposite sides of the square are decreased by 10 centimeters. Does either the area or the perimeter stay the same? I encourage you to pause the video and see what you come up with and then you can check your work against mine. Okay, so step one, we need to make sure we understand the problem. So what, what are we looking for? We're looking to see what happens to the area and the perimeter. Uh, it might be good to, to kind of review this. So initially we're talking about a square, but if we take a square and then we change the dimensions, we increase one side by, by 10 and the other side we decrease by 10, then it's gonna turn into a rectangle. So area for a square, Uh, we could use side, cute, uh, side squared, or we could say length times width, but since length and width of a square are the same, we can just say side squared. And for a rectangle, which we'll also need, is length times width, or base times height. The other thing to ask for is perimeter. So perimeter, that's the distance around our two-dimensional object. And the perimeter of a square is four times s, right? Because you would go around, so if we have a square, you would go from here to here to here to here. You would add up all those, those four sides, which are all the same. So if one side is S, then it would be four times S. And the perimeter for a rectangle, there's a few different ways you can write this. Uh, I usually just say it's twice the length plus twice the width. Okay, so just kind of mapping out what we have here. It also says square, so I'm gonna draw a square. And then it talks about increasing the dimensions on one, on two opposite sides, and decreasing the dimensions on the other sides. So what would happen is we would end up with, ooh, gross, let's try again. We would end up with something maybe like this. Now, there's two strategies that I would suggest using here. Number one is we don't know what the dimensions of the square are, they were not given to us. So we, when we have a number but we don't know what it is, we usually use a variable. So one option is to say, okay, well, this is x, so then this would be x, and then all of the, the, the four sides would all be x. The other thing that you could do is you could just make up a side length. So I think the square should be 20 centimeters across, in which case it'd be 20 on all four sides. That's fine if you do that. You just have to be very careful about the number you choose, right? Because if you're decreasing the side length by 10 centimeters, you can't choose the square to have side lengths of six centimeters because you can't take away 10 centimeters from that. So you can use a number, to see what happens, or more generally, we can use a variable, um, which isn't as specific. So if we stick with the variable, so one uh, set of opposite sides are being increased by 10, so this would become x plus 10, and the other two sides are being decreased by 10, so this would become x minus 10. And now what we'll do is we'll check the area and perimeter of each. So the area of the square this would have an area, side squared, where side is x, that'd be x squared. And the perimeter here is four times the side length, so it'd be four times x. Okay, what about over here? The area over here would be the length, x plus 10, times the width, x minus 10. And the perimeter would be twice the length, two times x plus 10, plus two times x minus 10. All right, let's see if either of these match the area or perimeter of the square. So this would be if we use the distributive property, x squared minus 10x plus 10x minus 100. Those cancel, we get x squared minus 100. These are not the same, so the area did not stay the same. What about the perimeter? We get 2x plus 20 plus 2x minus 20, which equals those cancel, we get 4x, which does match the perimeter. So does either the area or the perimeter stay the same? Yes, the perimeter does. Okay, so we've carried out step one, step two, and step three. Now we need to look back and make sure, does this make sense that the area changes while the perimeter would stay the same? And 
Yeah, I think I think it does make sense. The area would change because we're changing the dimensions. We're changing the, the factors that are being multiplied, which will, in fact, change the product. And the perimeter, while we're losing 10 in one dimension, we're gaining, no, we're gaining 10 in one dimension, we're losing 10 in the other dimension. So those kind of cancel each other out when we're just adding them together. So yes, this does make sense.